the first thing I want you to understand is how most people see the metabolism, right? When you hear most people talk about the metabolism, most of us professionals, when we're talking to our peers, we talk about the metabolism as if it's a calculator, right? As, as, as if it simply works by addition and subtraction of calories, right? Now, that's definitely not the way the metabolism works, okay? And it has serious limitations. And then so we sort of moved to this model where we said, you know what, it really doesn't work like a calculator. It sort of works like a chemistry lab, right? It kind of works like a chemistry set. Um, you, you have a certain recipe of chemicals you put in and you get a predictable output out. And the truth of the matter is the metabolism does not work like that either. Both of these models, the, the metabolism is a calculator and the metabolism is a chemical set are both wrong. Okay. Are both wrong. They are both weak models to be thinking about because they assume that all you need to do is have some exact formula that you follow and you'll get results or have this defined cocktail of chemicals like lowering insulin and you're going to get results. The truth of the matter is that the metabolism works more like a thermostat or a seesaw. Okay. That's how the metabolism works. It is an adaptive reactive system. You push on it, it pushes back against you. It's a really important distinction, isn't it? Because when you look at the, if you look at the metabolism as a calculator or you look at it as a chemistry set, you're really thinking that the metabolism just has this sort of defined formula or defined set of chemicals that all you have to do is plug in the right inputs and you automatically get this predictable reaction, right? That's not the way it works. The way it works is this adaptive reactive system. And that is what we need to talk about now. So I call it the law of metabolic compensation, okay? Now, you're not going to hear that term anywhere else. I refer to it as a law because what you guys need to know is that in weight loss research, it's pretty uh, contradictory at times. But if there's one thing that the weight loss researchers agree on without a doubt that's been proven over and over again and no one argues with, it is the fact that our metabolism adapts when we try to lose weight. And here's how this works. OK, here's the way it works. You Go on a diet, which we've talked about is an eat less, exercise more approach. And what begins to happen? The following begin to happen. Number one, hunger goes up, right? Number two, energy is lowered and motivation is lowered. And number three, cravings begin to increase. Now, why would the body be doing this, right? The body is... Uh, pushing back against you. It's being reactive and adaptive to what you were doing to it. You're trying to take its resources and fuel away. It says, huh, -uh, I might need that for a rainy day, right? This thing is adapted through millions and millions of years to hold on to its fat. That's what your body wants to do. Now, the other thing that the physiology does is the physiology begins to de decrease its metabolic rate. And here's what I want the professionals here on the line to uh, sort of understand. This is very individual. It depends on the person. The average amount of metabolic slowdown is about 300 kcals per day that we see when people are dieting, eating less, and exercising more. However, it can be as low as very little metabolic slowdown. It could be as high as about 800 kcals per day. Now, that's crazy, right? Imagine you're one of these people who has a very high adaptive reactive rate of metabolic slowdown and you're up in the 500 to 800 kcal per day slowdown what is going to happen to you with this increased hunger increased cravings low energy and motivation in other words your metabolism is going to make you want to eat more of the wrong things more often and in addition to that it's slowed down so now you're not burning the same amount of calories that you once did at rest previously. And what the result is, is weight regain and then overcompensation even, where you gain more fat than you had before you started the diet. So let me give you an example of what this looks like because this is absolutely critical. Then we can talk about how to deal with it. Here's how it works. Let's, let's take an example, right? So let's say that uh, I my resting 
energy expenditure, my basal metabolic rate is 2000 calories per day. That's how much I burn at rest, right? So the old model would say, okay, Jade, you need to eat less and exercise more. That's what you need to do. And you need to do that so that you could put yourself in roughly about a 500 calorie deficit per day, right? That's, that's what we, you know, kind of the standard in the industry says, produce a 500 calorie deficit every single day by doing some less eating and a little bit more movement. So now I'm consuming 1500 calories per day, right? Now I get some weight loss, right? And I'm excited. First couple of weeks, I'm like, all right, lost the weight. I'm doing great, moving right along. But then metabolic compensation kicks in, all of that stuff that we talked about. And let's say that my metabolic compensation is on the higher end, 500 to 800 kcal slowdown, not to mention that I'm fighting hunger urges and craving urges and a low motivation, right? What is going to happen when all of a sudden, now I was burning 2000 kcal per day, I put myself in this 500 calorie deficit, right? And now my metabolic rate compensates at 500. I'm going to hit a plateau, right? Or I may even start gaining weight, right? I may even start gaining weight. And so what happens with these individuals is they get stalled weight loss, weight regain, and overcompensation, meaning that they actually gain more weight than they lost. In other words, your metabolic seesaw says, no, thank you. I'm putting the brakes on, right? So important because here's what we typically do, and it's the exact wrong thing to do. What we do is we say, oh, well, we got a little bit of result in the short run. So, and, and things slowed down a little bit. So now, Jade, what I want you to do is just cut your calories further. Now we'll cut another 300 calories off. So instead of eating 1,500 calories, now I want you to do 1,300 calories, right? So you double down. You make another bet on the eat less, exercise more model. And what happens? The metabolism compensates again. And we repeat this pattern over and over and over again until sometimes people end up eating 800 calories a day and doing hours and hours of running every day. Here's the problem with this. You keep doing this and you all of a sudden now you go from metabolic compensation to metabolic resistance. And if you keep pushing, you get to what this seesaw here with the big guy on one end and a little tiny man on the other end, you get to metabolic damage. In other words, that seesaw basically breaks in half. And now instead of worrying about weight loss, this person has autoimmune disease, they have digestive upsets, they got depression, they can't do anything, right? They can't do anything anymore. So that is really important to understand that just because something works in the short run does not mean it is the right solution in the long run. And with dieting, it does work in the short run, which is kind of, a, it's, it has this allure to it, like it's sort of working, but the metabolic compensation kicks in and you end up worse off than you were before.